our hearts going to reach out to those that don't know him, don't want him, and spit on him? How many of you know that you've got to be in the love of God to do that because your flesh don't want to talk to people like that? Amen? Make a note of this. In these last days, you have to make a purpose, faith, attempt. Father God, touch my heart with your love. Teach me how to love like you love. Teach me how to see people through the eyes of your love. Not my re re reasoning, not my feelings, not my emotions, because that won't reach across the street. We'll only bless our family. We'll only bless our friends. We'll only sacrifice for those that we think are lovely, that we like, that we appreciate. But the unlovely, the, 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 the harsh, and the, and the evil, we'll stray from. We'll become the, the hypocrites uh, that walk around the crippled man. Amen. Amen. We'll become the ones that look good on the outside, but the love of God doesn't dwell in us, and we'll walk around the drug addict. We'll walk around the one who cussing us. We'll walk around the one that caused Christians fools. We'll walk around the new age guru. We won't reach out to them. We'll become hypocrites. But we have to pour in the oil and wine to the ones that are wounded and bruised and afflicted, no matter what they look like in the natural. Amen. Just like this brother, Pastor Tony, was testifying about that Jesus, the love of God, came on Pastor Tony and ministered to a drug addict and he gave his heart to Jesus. And now he's testifying that he's been two weeks completely delivered from the demon of drug addiction. Now that's the kind of person that you're out with your family, you go around them if you don't have the love of God in your heart. So it's very specific. You've got to love one another and other human, other members of the human race with the heart love of Jesus, with the eyes of Jesus, with the compassion of Jesus. And it is a supernatural love. You won't die for that person in the natural. You won't sacrifice for that person in the natural. You won't go five minutes out of your way for that person in the natural. But that's what we're commanded to do. Amen. Say it with me. We're commanded to do that. We're commanded to do that. It's not a suggestion. That's not a bless your heart. God knows anyway. It's a commandment from the Lord we claim we love. Now look at somebody and say, you are commanded to love like Jesus. You are commanded to love It's not a suggestion. It's not, it's okay if we skip this. We talk about the Ten Commandments, but Jesus taught us, what's the one greater commandment? To love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is equal to that, or caught up in that. Love thy neighbor the Hindu neighbor, the Buddhist neighbor, the black neighbor, the white neighbor, the Hispanic neighbor, the alcoholic neighbor, the wife-beating neighbor, the drug-addicted kid next door. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. What did he say? That's a commandment. Equal to all the other Ten Commandments. And borders on it. Actually, it testifies to your love of God. Amen. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and body. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And it is equal to the first great commandment. That will keep all the ten. And that proves how you really love God. Come on. Now that's going to take a, a, a Holy Ghost touch on your heart. That will drive you to your knees. And compel you into a room of prayer with tears and weeping. God, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to love like you. Amen. And until I do, my love for you is truly lacking. Yes. Well, well, there you go with the bondage. No, it's only bondage when we don't want to. When we want to, we'll sacrifice, we'll fast, we'll pray, we will weep, we will cry out until we get it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. So you like a great gospel. Amen. amen. All right. Now I want you to look with me over here to Ezekiel 
chapter 33. I want to speed this up just a little bit so we can get some a broader overview today. Ezekiel chapter 33, very familiar chapter to some people. Some of you, how many of you have never read this before? Raise your hands real high. Real high. If you have never read this, raise your hands real high. Several of us, so it's good that we're going to this. Ezekiel chapter 33. And you know, there's people that are so locked up. All right, yes, we're going to do that. Put your finger there. Have you found it? Yes. In Ezekiel 33? Put your finger there and go back to Titus 2. Titus chapter 2. And it, I'm going to this because the Holy Spirit says, address this because there's a perversion of my grace that warps everything people read and everything people study. How many of you know that you interpret God according to your desires? Do you know that? That you will read the Bible and interpret it to the bent, the inclination of your already prejudiced heart. Did you hear me? Amen. So until we come to God and empty ourselves out as a sacrifice on his altar so that he can fill us back up with him, everything we read, everything we study, and every way we pray will be shaded in our pre-established prejudices. And I don't mean prejudice as racial, I mean prejudice as personal preference. Amen. Amen. How many of you know what the personal preference of the body of Christ is in this last hour? Hallelujah, what's it to you? Do whatever you want, you're saved by grace. Amen. It's an eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, spirit. And we'll go to heaven. It's a whatever you want to do because it's all about grace. And that is not what grace is about. Look at Titus chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 11. This is the actual definition of what grace is for. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? So grace gets us into the kingdom, and then grace keeps the kingdom in us. Amen. Let me tell you something, folks. Listen to this. Write it down. Etch it in your heart. Never forget this. If the kingdom's not etched in your heart, grace has not had its work. Amen. Grace isn't just to get you saved is to get the kingdom of salvation in you. You don't do works to get righteous, but once you're righteous, you do works of righteousness. Amen. Because the kingdom's in you. Amen? Amen. So all these people say, I'm saved by grace, but there's nothing reflection, there's no reflection of the kingdom in their lifestyle, in their mannerisms, in their love, in their desires, in their wants. That grace didn't have a real work in them. They got graced in their head, not in a transition, not in a transformation. A lot of people saved in their head, but not truly saved at all. Because every tree starts doing what? Producing fruit. Maybe at different speeds, maybe at different manifestations. That tree, a, a big old, well, a, a big old stocky tree like, <laughs> don't say that F word. A big old full figure tree like Tony. <laughs> I didn't say have it because every time, every time Pastor Darlene brings up my brother, I say, you mean my big fat brother? <laughs> and my brother's big, he's big. But I would almost, I'm a full figure man of God like Tony. When you're looking at a great big full figure tree like Tony, he's loaded with all kinds of fruit. Then there's somebody else that's truly saved but they're just not growing as fast or as it developed. But there's going to be one or two apples or spiritual fruits beginning to manifest. So each tree is going to grow at a different speed. And, but the point is this, listen. If it's a tree, it's going to grow. And if it's a fruit tree, it's going to grow fruit. Amen. Different speeds, different, different uh, manifestations. But it's going to produce evidence the kingdom came in. Amen. When you got somebody I've saved and they're barring, clubbing, hopping, and whoring, so I doubt they really got saved. Hallelujah. By your tangent, Jesus said you'll know them by your fruit. I'm not dropping a gavel and saying you're going to hell, putting judgment on them, but I'm judging discernment. Amen. And we live in a generation that has no, no understanding of the difference of those. 
And if you don't understand the difference, you'll think grace did a move when grace didn't have any effect whatsoever. Come on. You're saved by grace through faith and not of works, lest any man would boast. You are there because of the love of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But once the love of God comes in and grace has actually led you to the Lord, then grace begins to work a manifestation of the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his mentality, his holiness, his government, his wants, his likes, his dislikes in you. Amen. Even to the point that it starts becoming visible out of you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I'll say this, if you don't mind me saying this, if somebody has been saved and they truly are born again and they're going to church and there's still no difference in them year after year after year, then they're in a lousy church. Amen. Come on. Amen. They're not learning what they need to learn. They're being entertained. Amen. Can I have a hallelujah? Amen. So that's how you judge that. Okay, they're really saved. I know they're really saved, but boy, they're not changing much. They're in the wrong place. They're, they're sitting under a motivational speaker, not a man or a woman of God, preaching the uncompromised word of God with authority and dominion and faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now look at Titus, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Titus 2, 11. Say hallelujah when you're there. Hallelujah. Say it like you're Pentecostal. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's pathetic. A Baptist is better than that. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Oh, that's better. We're in a Holy Ghost church now. <laughs> Amen. For the grace, say it with me, grace. grace. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. So that's how you're saved, by grace. Amen. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Hello. What's the number one, what's, what is that explained as? The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. How's that? How did it happen? Pastor Teresa. You jumped to part two. It came through Jesus. He was the grace of God poured out on the earth. Amen? Amen. Now how does that continue? Through people. Amen? So there's even different stages for that grace to continue. Well, Jesus came, but it stopped there if we don't let grace do a work in us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now watch this. The grace of God that has appeared, uh, the, the great salvation hath already appeared to all men. Amen? Amen. Amen. Teaching us. Now there's something else grace is doing after it appeared. It begins teaching. Amen. What? What does grace teach? Watch. Teaching us Denying ungodliness. What's the first thing grace teaches? Ungodly. Holiness. Get out of the world. Stop living like you used to. What's the last thing you hear in this generation? Oh, we're saying like grace. We don't confess that. Suck your lock in. You fuck. Be happy. No, if grace is moving, the first thing grace does after salvation is start teaching you to clean up your act and live holy. Deny ungodly lifestyles and activities. Amen. Somebody said that's good preaching for a white boy. That's good preaching, preaching for a white boy. boy. It's bad for a Hispanic, but it's pretty good for a white guy. Amen? Amen. Begins teaching us denying ungodliness and what? Worldly lust. Are the things the world lusts after, you're taught by grace to start denying that. What the world lives for, what the world enjoys, grace, grace, grace teaches you get rid of that. Amen. So when you are a Christian, dressing like the world, dancing like the world, entertained by the world, can tell everybody what the latest movies are, the last ten greatest musical hits, and everything a worldly man can talk about, you're equally informed in, you have not been in a truly grace church. Amen. You've been in a compromised church. Well, I don't care how you twist that or whether you like it or not, that's straight out of the Holy Scripture. 
Grace begins an immediate work of denying of godliness and worldly lust. Amen. 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 We should live soberly, not party spirits, but serious about this walk with God. Serious about this walk with God. Serious about this walk with God. That we should live soberly and righteous by righteous, but you're supposed to live righteously. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And godly in this present world. Where are you supposed to be holy, godly, and righteous? Right here, right now, in this filthy generation. Amen. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the what are what are we supposed to be focused on as grace people? Not doing what we used to do and say, thank God I'm covered by grace, getting away from that and looking for his appearance. Amen. We're supposed to be living for his return. So if we're living for his return, that means we're going to be living for his heart. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? Now, if you don't understand that, you won't understand. The, the reason I went through all that is explain this. As soon as, in this generation, as soon as you go to the Old Testament, that's Old Testament, that's God, that's legalism, that's bondage. We're New Testament people. And they've already become willfully ignorant of what the totality of what God's heart is. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and when? Forever. Forever. So don't you tell me what we got to get relevant and change with our generation. God didn't change nothing. He expects each generation to repent and become relevant to him. Well, listen to me. Pastor Tony, I'm going to talk and, and Daryl. We're, old, we're older men. Back when it, it wasn't illegal and embarrassing to be called a man. And you didn't have to apologize for having uh, man bodies. Amen. And men didn't shave themselves and be more supple around the other girls. Amen. I'm talking for me as a man that's not ashamed of being a man and that isn't going to apologize for being a man. God. Amen. Amen. If a woman gets around me with hot pads and high heels and cutting her down to here and, 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 and sits next to me, I don't think attractive. I think whore. Yeah. Amen. What's more sexy to me is an elegant mannerism covered body. Are you any more here saying? There, listen, Amen. There, there's beauty in suspense. Amen. Amen. When she's taking it on the market, you already know the breast, the breast size, the waist size, the, the, everything about her because she's wearing parts of clothes instead of a covered, beautifully adorned woman with a dignified mannerism. That's ten times more sexy to me. Amen. Come on. So ladies, listen to me. Christians, listen to me. The reason the world's not lusty, they're not, they're not panting for what you have. You're marketing yourself by being just like them. There's no suspense. You have nothing that they don't already see. There's no hidden revelation, knowledge, and beauty of Christ in you. Well, why are you like that? Why do you dress different? Why don't you go drinking? Because Christ is in me and I love him. That will attract them more than you taking things off, shutting them, jiving, running around and being just like them. Hallelujah. you got nothing to entice them. Amen. There's nothing you love enough to make you different than what they already have. Amen. There's a beauty and an attraction to holiness and difference. Amen. 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 If you were single and you're out looking for a wife, I'm not wanting one walking around wearing band aids. Oh, what is covered, protected of her dignity and honor, and you ain't playing with this until your heart's right toward me. Amen. 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 Same thing in Christianity, people. We're doing a great injustice to God by just exposing our.
ourselves and jumping into bed with the world. Come on, brother. Can I hear hallelujah? Amen. Amen. That is why, because of a perversion of grace, it's taken away the mystery and the, and the dignity of Jesus Christ as the Lord of glory and the Redeemer of my soul. And I love him so much, I, I dress how my, 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 my future groom wants me to dress. Amen. I live for him, not you. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. So with all that, I have to say that to get you into Ezekiel 33. Or all over the world, they say, bind it, bind it, bind it. Because they don't understand grace teaches you something about being different to the world. Amen. Grace of God appeared, but the grace of God continues appearing uh, because of something that takes place. Amen. In you, by God. Amen. 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 All right, Ezekiel 33, are you ready? Yes. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, who's he talking to? Servants. A servant, amen? amen? Speak to the children of thy people. Who's he talking to? Son of man, stand up and speak to your nation, to your people. How many of you know everybody wants to be a missionary to some foreign country because they don't want to be embarrassed by keep talking to their neighbors? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You speak to your people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, say Corona. Corona. If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. Well, I gotta stay focused. How much time do I have? I could preach on that right there for a week. 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. We'll, we'll do our best. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know that when the preacher stands up there with holes in his jeans and his, his flip flops? And his little tight butted blue jeans, sucking lattes in a tar rape style t shirt, and, and standing like that when he preaches. <laughs> what do you think of that guy? Well, there's Bill. There's no sanctity to the call of God, there's no reverence to what he's got to say. He's just motivated. He might stir you up a bit, make you feel good. Your neighbor can do that. But you don't look at him as a vessel as an oracle, as a proclaimer of God's holy word and will. Amen. What did he say here? If the people will set a watchman, that means that, that they're out of the flock of people, there is a setting forth of somebody that we know you hear God. And when you speak, you're not speaking as my neighbor. You're not speaking as my husband. You're not speaking as my friend. You're speaking as a container, a representative, an ambassador of God Almighty. There's a respect and honor that comes from a man being set apart. Amen. Not like the sheep, not playing with them, not sucking lattes with them, but a separate, sanctified, consecrated life unto God for the people. Your better, better, betterment. 
I'm sanctifying myself as far away from the world as possible so that I'm clear to hear God's voice and I'm not playing with a bunch of different other voices that are worldly and compromised. Why? Because there's swords of destruction coming upon the world all the time. Amen. And God doesn't want his people. Listen, God doesn't want people to die. That's what we're getting to. Amen. Amen. God does not want people to die. Yeah. And when we can walk by people every day by the dozens, indifferent to the fact that most of them are going to hell, and it doesn't enlarge our prayer life and open our mouths. Something's wrong with grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. We can close right there. I'm going to turn on that for a second. Verse 3. And when they see the sword come upon the land, if that watchman, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, this is amazing that when we, everybody in this church knows Jesus is at the door and we're out of time. Amen? Amen? But then you turn on the favorite TV preachers and they're still talking money, 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 money. Something's wrong. And these are guys I love and were raised by. But how many of you know there's dispensations and there's time to change? Right now the emphasis of God is on one thing, so. Get and the ones that are already saved get the willingness out of you and get the light right in you so that those souls have a light to come to. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. And when you see the sword come upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warn the people, well, we're not doom and gloom. Well, then you're stupid. Pardon my language. Amen. You're just dumber than a sack of rocks. Amen. Well, yeah, but we're, we're God's covenant people. Folks, you don't get it. The children of God lived in the land of Goshen right smack dab in the middle of Egypt. What happened to Egypt? Pestilence. Judgment. Judgments, plagues, locusts, frogs, water turned to blood. It, it was getting decimated. God brought them out of that. It didn't come on them. But you don't use that as the analogy of how to live, how to live now. Don't say, well, we're consecrated. We're, we're covenant people, so God's not going to judge America. A country that murders 60 million unborn human beings every single year, the judgment of God's not on it? Amen. You need to wake up. The head of God's against America, it may not be against you personally, but it's coming upon everybody around you. And the difference is, he's not interested in just making you escape and find Canaan land. He wants you to reach as many out there in the middle of the frogs, in the middle of the lies, in the middle of the locusts, in the middle of the plagues, and wait up to Jesus Christ. Amen. And take them with us. How should you live when the sword's coming on your nation? Throw the net as far and as fast as you can. Now I'm jumping all over the place, but it's good anyway. Amen? Amen. Amen? So then when they hear the sound of the trumpet and take not warning, if the people don't listen, and how many of you know 99% of them right now don't want to hear a thing you've got to say? I admit that. I know that. I preach to them every week. And it's harder to get through the reprobate minds now than it's ever been in my 35 years of ministry. But that does not change the command of love. Amen? Amen. Then whosoever heareth the trumpet, take not warning. If the sword come and take that man away, his blood shall be upon his own head. You know what that means? That's his fault. Amen. We were in Victory Meadows for 10 years. The hardest center of ghetto living anywhere in the city of Dallas. And we preached, proclaimed, saw the lame walk, the blind see, deaf ears open, demons cast out, and nobody joined the church. Yeah. Amen. You know what? That's on there. Yeah. We were called to go, to shout, to preach, proclaim, heal, and cast out devils. If they don't respond, their blood is on them. But my hands are clean. Blood's on our own head. Verse five. He heard the sound of the trumpet. Did you? Did, did 
Did the man of God sound the trumpet? That's the issue. Yes. Did they hear? Yes. Then it's on them. Amen? Amen. Well, watch this. Because some of you have never read this chapter ever in your entire life. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and he did not take warning. He laughed at you and didn't think he needed Jesus. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning says, oh my God, you're right. Jesus saved me. Shall be, taketh warning, shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword and blows not the trumpet, doesn't open the mouth, doesn't change the dispensation, doesn't say it's not church as usual. It's time to get right. It's time to get holy. It's time to come out. It's time to preach, share, proclaim Jesus like never before. Not worried about your lattes. Not worried about your big houses. Not worried about your best life now. But preach, 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 preach. Amen. But if that watchman sees the sword come and blows not the trumpet, the people be not warned. If the sword comes and takes away any person from among them, he is taken away in his sin. Get this well, we're all getting to heaven anyway. As a matter of fact, stop right there, look pastor. Stop right there, look pastor. I'm going to give you a tool of wisdom to use against all these people who say, well, we're all going to get to heaven. You can't judge. We're, we're all going to get to the same God. We're all God's children. And you just stop and say, you know what, you're right. They'll blink at you like a frog in a hell. So what do you mean I'm right? You know, you're right. We're all going to be in heaven. Every single one of us are going to go the same way. You and I are going to stand in front of Jesus together just long enough for you to be judged and drugged to hell. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they're all going to be there with me. But they're not all going to stay there with me. Amen. Amen. sword come and take away that person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood, now watch this and never forget it. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. How many Christians are sitting around sucking latte, seeking their best life now with hands covered in blood?
translation says this, you will have my word in your mouth, warn the people for me. Amen. You understand, just take a minute, just take a moment, that the creator of all has entrusted in me the responsibility and ability to take one hand and touch heaven and one hand and touch earth and bring them together. He's trusting me to warn them for him. Hallelujah. He's depending on you to do something for them. Turn from it, repent. If you do not turn from 
from his way, he will die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered your soul. You're all right with God as long as you've opened your mouth and told him the truth of love. But if you refuse to do that on God's behalf, you're in trouble with God. It's not okay. Let me say it it's not okay. Amen. It's not okay. Amen. God's counting on you to open your mouth and tell them you're not right with God. You're lost in your sin. Jesus Christ is the only way. And if you don't accept it, you will surely die and go to hell. Amen. And we'll continue this next week. But for right now, now I'm opening my mouth. I'm speaking to you that are not born again. You that are not right with God. There's not multiple ways to heaven. There is no other way of getting there. You're not just a seeker. You're not just working out your spiritual journey. You are lost in your sins. You need to accept the saving blood of Jesus Christ. You must be born again. For no man sees the Father except through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And if you're not, you will surely be damned and already are dead in your trespasses and sins. Amen. Now, if you know that, well, you know it's true. It's, you're convicted in your heart. And you're ready to give your heart. Lift up your hands. Accept Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart. He will come in. He will save you. He will redeem you. And you 